enough purpose to fulfill. So you can't carry everybody along. They don't fit. You know, we have friends for every circle, for every level. It's not everybody you take all the way. It's not everybody you introduce to your family. It's not every friend you bring to your home. And you insist to your husband. We were in high school. We used to share one. We were in the university. You don't bring them that far. Some people cannot reach that level. It's not everybody. Very few. So you watch who you talk to and who is close to you. And be conscious to know that they affect your character. They affect your personality. Positively or negatively. So you have to be very selective. You have to pray about some things. About some people. Some contracts that you want to sign, you have to ask God, is this of you or not? If it's not of you, no matter good, no matter how good it looks like, you drop it. Because it will affect you. You will feel good now, but after that, the fruit will start coming out. The problem is, you don't know when the fruit will, that will start coming out. The, you know, the Bible says you will know them by their fruits. But some fruits, eh? some, trees are not, eh? some trees are mangoes. By the time they come out, you have already spoiled your house. Everything is scattered. Some fruits are very quick, like tomatoes. They will just come out and you know this one is wicked. But how about your friend is like a mango tree? That crucial time it may take very long. So you need God to show you in prayer who is the right person to hang out. Who do I share my problems to? It's not everybody you tell your troubles Everybody goes through, the Bible said we will go through tribulations and trials, but just for a season to make us better people. But at that period, who do you share your heart to? Who do you talk to about your husband? Is it everybody? Those friends that will tell you, me, my husband, he gives me this, he gives me that, and you are thinking, hmm, so this one, my own, he just gives me 10 naira. Your own is giving you, uh, so you come home, Loaded to, 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 to pressure the man who has been working so hard. You dated him, you married him, he didn't have anything. And you have come up. You know his story now. He, he has not changed. He said here that the economy is bad for everybody and the salary has not increased. But because somebody told you, lied to you, most friends are liars. They just want to show you show down, but they know they, they lie. They just want to outshine and give you stories that don't make sense. It's not every story you buy. It's not everything you hear. You come and tell your husband, hey, did I hear that you are, you, are, you are... Some people want to break your marriage. Some people are jealous of your success. So because you have brought them so close, they will be misadvising you. So sometimes it's better to shut your mouth, talk to your husband and God. Keep it there. And uh, thank God for good mothers. But some mothers are seeds of other wicked mothers, so they want to transfer. So you have to be very sensitive. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? You have to learn. You have to know who to tell some things. And know that you don't carry everybody along. Stop insisting that this my... You know some men say, this man he used to be my head boy. We went to the same university. We did the same course. You, you don't know. I love this man. He's like my own brother. You bring him to your house. Your wife is saying, please, finish this, your friendship in the market. When you come home, don't bring him. You insist, ah, uh -uh, who are you? I bring whoever I want. You bring trouble to your house. Before you see that man, go see your, he knows your high school weakness and your, so you will, before you realize the thing as, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> So, shield is your duty to protect your marriage, your woman, celebrate her, love her. It's not about money. They said, it's not these clothes that we wear that shows our value. It's more than this. You can be wearing $2 clothes, but inside you're, you're carrying something. So, it's not about clothes. Don't be distracted by women who show you, hey, my husband, he buys my clothes in Dubai, and so what? Will we eat Dubai? We are in Nigeria. It's the same troubles we will face. It depends on the stamina and the power you carry. It's not the clothes you wear. If it was in the clothing, many people would have been very successful. You can't determine by that. Amen? Am I speaking to somebody? You know, when God called Abraham, he didn't call him with lots. You know the story. 
he called Abraham and he said, I will make you father to nations. You will do this, your children, your generations. Lot was not in the picture. But what did Abraham do? He insisted on bringing his brother. I have to go with him. Read the story all through. It was trouble all the way. Why? Because he insisted of carrying somebody along. If he, he only got the revelation that he does not need anybody. See, you can help your relatives from a distance. It's not all people you bring close. Because this is my blood brother. My blood. He has to come. If they come and reign in your house, things will scatter. You choose between your wife and things will fall apart. You have to protect. It's your duty. You know the limit of your family, the limit of your brother, the limit of a life friend, the one you grew up together, the one who sponsored you or the one who introduced you to that woman. Hey, there's limit to it now. Come on now. And you tell him up to here, our friendship. Here. Then from here is my duty. So don't help me from this end. Mm -hmm. Then you will build your own home. But if you bring every helper, yeah, you see, this sister in church is very committed. See that woman that was acting there. Did you see the character? When the pastor called, oh, daddy. Daddy, I will clean the toilets. I will sweep the floor. From the eyes of the pastor, that woman is very faithful. If you see a wealthy woman who has like 10 drivers and he will be cleaning the toilet, uh, uh, wouldn't you be moved? How you say this is the most committed Christian? But see the wickedness in her home. So it's not sister that you see very committed. It's committed. It goes deeper than that. Some, some goodness are too good to believe. So you have to be alert. Your eyes have to be... You know, if your husband... God bless your husbands, you know. Our husbands, they don't like long story. She's good now, forget. She's, she cleans the... That's it. But you... Women, we, have, we are special. We have eyes here, here, here. Waiting! We know these things now. So when your eyes are open and your man has not gotten the revelation, use wisdom and uh, put, put barrier. Barricades! Every road that you know this road is uh, going to put barrier. So when she comes, she reaches the barrier. The road ends. You will have helped your home and your husband. You are his eyes now. We are the helpers, Abby. All round. So there are things our men don't see, but we see. But now wisdom now has to come in. How to balance and put barrier. Amen? Am I speaking the truth? So it's not every friend. They are not all friends. Not all daughters are daughters, mama. Some people are looking at you and they say, if I only had this man. Hey! My day will have been. Uh, uh, so they say, ah, I have a gift for Papa. Oh, hey. So you know some daughters are wicked. They say, oh, Papa. <laughs> so you know how to. There is one eye that you give that will. Without talking. Now that's the wisdom. Because uh, he's your papa, but he's my husband. So there has to be a barrier between the chairman of building uh, departments and my husband. He's my husband. So when you're doing your committee, finish the building committee. When he comes to me, he's in my custody. So don't bring uh, minutes to home. Finish your minutes in the office. When you come home... We are talking about our children, how we love one another, how we met, how I love you. Uh, you ginger your man, but all this uh, trouble of, uh, uh, we bought, we, she's bringing some notes from, uh, eh? we finished in the office. Am I saying the truth? We have to speak the truth, because if we don't speak, who will speak for us? Women are crying, because what will I do now? If I tell him, he will chase me, he will do this. Ask God for wisdom. See, when you go in prayer, you say, this man, see, I normally joke a lot with my husband. He's the best man, you know. I celebrate him. And he leaves in the morning to the office. I look at him. I say, I'm my husband. You look too good. You just laugh. I say, ah. the way you are dressed, hey, who is coming for appointment today? He will laugh. He says, see your head. I say, no, 
I want to say a prayer. And he's standing at the door. I say, every wicked eye. Before they even see you, they will be seeing vampire. They won't see what I'm seeing. I cancel every road. Anybody who is coming with wickedness, you will miss your appointments because of my prayer. See, I would do that blinding prayer. No God hears prayers. Hallelujah. So it's you to know how to put barrier. You pray. You pray some things and God will put them in order. Because <laughs> we are to support each other. We are the hidden bone. And our role is crucial. Because if the man fails, it's your fault. See that man. He's trying his best. But the woman is bringing him down. Where will he get the money? You want to be like the society women. All these groups that we belong. You go there, everybody's driving. Let us go. You tell your husband, this is a shame now. How will I be going? Uh, bus, ride, go taxi. I need that. You pressure your man because you want to be like somebody else. You don't know what they are going through. You don't know if the cars are for loan or they are still paying. Don't push him. Be contented with what you have. Tell him, even without anything, I would have been your wife. It's not about what you have. That's what I tell my husband. You know, when I got married to him, they said, this small girl, she must have seen this man is a billionaire. She must have seen the old stories they said. But I told him, whether you had money or not, if God has given me an assignment, and if my destiny is connected, tied to you, with or without money, I'll be your wife. We would stay without Jen. Open the windows. Stay outside. Sleep early because it's so hot. I don't care about all those things. Because it is more than what we see. It's more than physical. So this is connection. So what I'm saying, do not be equally yoked to anybody. Because the yoke does not work. If the bulls are not of the same size, the yoke will go like this. So you have to look for a person that you're equally yoked. If you talk to your husband and say, this is my friend, he will say, mm. because the value that since your friendship came, it has gone up. But somebody who comes into your life and soon you change, there is a problem. And these men, they see. They see or they know. When you start changing, you won't know yourself. You'll be manifesting. <laughs> that mama said, this is not my daughter. Because who taught you all these things? Because if we are emulating our mothers, we would do better because our mothers didn't have what we have. Some of us, we are the role models of our homes. You are the one who is providing for them. So you saw what they went through and still stood. They became your father's wives for life. So you cannot be representing another person. It can only be the society which has changed you. It's people that you have started listening to. Am I speaking the truth? So you, you have to be mindful of, of who, you, who you hang around with. Same to men, because some men are wicked. See, my dad is a pastor, so he was preaching one day. He said, few stupid men gathered, and they said, let's beat our women. You know those village men? They want to show their power by... He said, if we go home today, we slap them. They agree, like five men. And they went home. The chairman of that meeting said, I will start. So they went home. They were like, how... Eh? You say, ah, I slap. When they met later, is there, they, this one said, how would I slap my wife? I cannot, I was joking. But the rest, they beat up their wives. <laughs> so, so there's no, uh, how do you treat your, every home is peculiar. Every husband is peculiar. Every wife is special. So you don't have to be like anybody. How I run my home is not the way you would want to run your home. I've had people come to my house and say, you know, here, here, I say, mm, see, I'm a Kenyan woman. So I will run my house like a Kenyan woman. So if you enter here, you, are, you know you are in Kenya territory. <laughs> so d don't bring your culture lessons because it will I will take time to learn. I've learned from my mom. So those are the virtues I'm bringing. If they are good, I will pick. If they are not good, give me time now. I need to separate chaff from the wheat. It's not everything you take. You define your home and you define who you are. You don't allow people to tell you, oh, in our house, you know my husband, he does this, you know my wife does, hey, that's good for you, my own. We have different technique. We have different style and we are happy. And you stay 
happy and content. The problem is when you are thirsty. When you have itchy ear, that's where the problem is. You want to know the new thing, the new dresses that have come, the bags, the shoes. Do you have the money? If you don't have the money, keep quiet. That's why that mother said, look for something to do. Many women are suffering because, you know, I, I told one woman, look for something to do. He said, my husband said, I'm providing everything for you, so sit down and take care of the children. I said, eh, the day you will be broke, what will you do? We are supposed to help each other. You bring 50, you will bring 95, you bring 5%. So the day there is a, you will not know there is no chicken in the house because you have something you kept. So don't be foolish. If they say don't go to school, you say yes. Don't go to work, you say yes. And then slowly, you know, we have wisdom of how to sneak into our husband's heart. By the time he allows you to go and work, he will not even realize. Am I talking? Yes. Wisdom. You don't have to say, hey, before you married me, you know I'm a graduate, I need to work. You will fight. Because the man is a millionaire. He wants to support you and wants you to be the African woman sit at home. You say, I'll be at home. I'll take care of you now. But now with wisdom, you go around like this. By the time you change his mind, he won't even know. He will just say, you know my wife, she will be back right now. By the time he comes home, you're already home. Your house is already in order. And you will see the value of what you do. Not the mouth that you took and the ears and you bring to the house. Am I speaking to somebody? See the friends that went with the lame man. Eh? The Bible said they used to drop him at the gate beautiful. See, see wicked people. And they enter the gate. They leave the man outside. Why didn't they carry him inside and let him sit somewhere? They left him outside. Those are wicked friends. The man sat at the gate. He is he's admiring and he's hearing noise, but he does not know what's going on inside. He said, if I can only walk and see what is going on here. These people that come here, thank God, you know, for wisdom. Even in, your, in his lameness, he chose the right gate. Because that's the gate he got his miracle. And what does the Bible say? When the man was healed, what did he do? What was the first thing? He entered. That tells you, he has this wickedness. He wants to tell them, carry me in. But he said, since they have brought me all the way, let me just keep quiet and sit at the gates. Those are wicked friends. But see good friends that brought the man who was paralyzed to Jesus. The house was full. The Bible says there was no room. There was no place to go in. These friends calculated, where could Jesus be standing? They went to the roof. Remove that thing without asking permission. No? And drop the man at the feet of Jesus. Their own was... If he's healed, that's our joy. Those are good friends that will die with you. They will tell you techniques of success. They will pray with you. If you say, I'm having a problem, they say, let's pray. Let's take a fast and pray. You know, God can change the heart of a man. He, the hearts of kings are in his hands. Those are women you need to hang around with. And the men that will add value. That, that mean good for you. Am I communicating? The way you are looking at me, as somebody dropped you at the gate, you won't be there for long anymore. God has brought help your way. You will enter in and you will be helped to other people. Amen? Amen. Clap for Jesus, somebody. Amen. It's so powerful. Don't hang around everybody. Don't be yoked with everybody. We are not all equal. Let the small bulls yoke together. The ones that are, you can't be a grown up and sharing your problems with somebody who has no wife. What will they understand about marriage? They will give you advice from the books that they read, they will give you advice from the movies that they watched. So, you need an experienced man. That's why you need a mentor and you need a father. You need a mother. Some of you, you don't tell even your mama what's going on in your, she will just hear stories. It's when it has gone bad, you come and say, Mama, I didn't come back. Where did you go first? Because of the anger, you, most of us, we want better things for our husbands. We want good things for our children. But this desperacy sometimes pushes us to go too far. You go and consult wickedness before you come to the house of God. Because you say, what would I have done? They say there's help in this place, in this village. Before you realize you have scattered your home. May God help us. May God give us wisdom. Amen? I was reading about... Elizabeth, you know, sometimes our miracles delay and we think God has forgotten. 
and we run too fast, faster than God. It's dangerous to run faster than God. You better wait because he knows his timing. They say his timing is always the best. He may delay, but he knows why he has delayed. So don't push too fast. If you see it's not working, relax and tell him, let your will be done. Because her own birth was delayed because she was supposed to bring forth the man who will clear the way for Jesus. If she gave birth before and, you know, jump-started his own things, he would, not have, he would not have done the right thing. Amen? Let's read that book in... Um, I won't talk about Elizabeth more because we all know the story. It's, it's at the right time that God chose she gave birth. And you know, when they were naming John the Baptist, that was the most amazing story, you know. That's why we are peculiar, we are priceless. She said, he will be called John. The people say, the community, the society, is supposed to be named after his father. He said, no. She said, no. His name will be John. Because that's what he ha she had from the angel. And when they told the father to write, he wrote what? John. But if she was foolish and scared and not strong like that boy, she would have said, okay, let's call him like his father. But sometimes the strength and the revelation that we have will make us make good choices, good decisions that later it will pay. Amen? Amen. Clap for yourself now. Amen. I was talking about fathers. And if you don't get the revelation about fatherhood, you misuse. And when you misuse it, you miss your blessings. Because so many fathers and big people, God has called them to great missions. And sometimes there's one thing that does, that does not work for them. But it doesn't mean they are weak. I read about people... I was reading yesterday, I saw Abraham said, you'll be father of nations. You'll be this, you'll be that. But he didn't have his own child for how long? Did it mean that God had forgotten him? No, but you know, Sarai, he thought, since God has said you'll be father to nation and there is no child so far, let me sacrifice. Let me get this girl to give you. But you know, still, that child could not be the child, the promised child. It had to be at God's time. Many years later, God gave them a child. I read about Zechariah, the priest who went to the altar to offer sacrifice. And he asked God for a child, and there was no answer for many years until he forgot. His wife, you know, thank God for women of God. We stand by our husbands. Some things we know we won't say because we are, God has given us, we are special. We are there for a mission, as I said. We pray, we keep praying. I remember that woman, I said, she must have been praying. I said, God, these people that my husband will pray for, they get children. They will come for this miracle. My husband said, he could not sleep for eight, how many? One, one year plus. He lost his sleep, and we had just gotten married. So I said, eh. they will say, this Kenyan girl, she has brought. <laughs> how can an old general, he can't sleep. We did prayers, or we did everything. But we got revelation. And when God gave us the revelation, we relaxed and said, we will wait on God's healing at his time. Because there's nobody who misses his sleep for a week and they're still alive. You die now. Because you're conscious. You lose your head. But see, the many, one year, by the time we were one year, see, it's something I clapped for myself because I was newly married. And God told me, shh. Not even his relatives knew the story. I was the only one, not even his children. Me and him, we just be praying, 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 praying. We take time, we pray, we went every, there's nothing we didn't do, but quietly, wisdom. And I said yesterday, grace to know how when to mm, and when to ah. Because sometimes you ah when you're supposed to mm, And that's where you spoil the thing. For one year plus, Man of God, we kept quiet and prayed. We prayed. We prayed. We said, God, at your time. At your time. It was after one year plus two months, he got his healing. He slept again. Because I said, if he was to die, he would have died within one week or two weeks. Because he's heavy duty preacher. 
He travels. He would go to nations, preach to people, pray for people. They would give testimony. I couldn't sleep for three days. But when you prayed, my sleep came. They say, devil, you are wicked. See now. The devil will say, you see, these people can sleep. <laughs> you just laid hands. Those hands you have laid on yourself, the sleep, it didn't come. He said, no, with sleep or without sleep, I'll keep serving God. We were on the road for all those months. He would pray for people. They received the exact miracle. The testimony, Russia, where we went, you know, Ukraine, everywhere. That's the testimony. Somebody would say, I couldn't sleep. But when you prayed, hey, the person would cry. He would look at the person and say, I'm one year plus, no sleep. But we stood. And one day, God answered. When he gave testimony, everybody looked at me and said, ah. I said, now God, he gives grace. Things that you go through, don't give up. Because if God has allowed it, he allowed for a purpose. So the only prayer you should do is, I need to pass this test. God help me that I will not fail you. Because I said, God forbid that this thing will happen. This man will be weak or something will happen to him when I just got married to him. It will not happen in my time. I said, there has to be a testimony out of this thing. And God gave us a powerful testimony. See, your prayer should be, in this my assignment, let me not fail. So if your husband starts to manifest some things, pray for him. Pray for him. And our prayers as women are so powerful. God will hear. God listens to our cry. Because it, is it in the Bible? Is it not in the Bible that say, where are the wailing women? Because one cry will touch the heart of, heart of God. One cry. And God will hear. So you know where to take your prayers. Not to people. If I was very, very quick to tell everybody, hey, my husband cannot sleep. That story would be all over Nigeria. Because he has friends and he has enemies. There are people who want to hear he has failed. There are people who want to hear that that woman he brought failed. They will say, you see? You see? But God... He shut my mouth. I said, I will not say it. I will, even my own father, when he came for Azusa conference, is when my husband was giving testimony. He looked at me. When they gave him to talk, he said, I trust my daughter. He said, I know God has given her. Do you know that bone now? She, said, she told them, this girl, she's small, but she has gone through stuff. She understands some deep things that you may not understand. So I'm not worried. I'm not complaining why she didn't tell me. If she could not carry it, she would have called me. Because I'm a pastor now, I would have prayed. So, Zachariah, his wife, when God came to the man and said, the angel said, you will have a child. He said, which child? At this, I didn't expect this because, eh? He could not believe it. But the woman, did you read anywhere she complained? She did not complain. The Bible said she conceived. It's only the man that doubted and said, hey. so men of God, pray for them because God will use them for your good. And when you're doing well, don't forget them because sometimes they got some needs. They got some things that needs to be pushed to somebody to stand in the gap. Amen? Am I making sense? The way you are looking at me. Eh? Is, is it this my dress? I would have worn a... <clears throat> you didn't give me SMS for the... I didn't get the text for the clothing. You see, everybody's in blue. See now, where was the text? Anyway. So the woman got a boy. God blessed him with a child. After many years of waiting. And see, I was imagining when he left the place he was praying. Praying and interceding for people. The Bible said there were so many people outside waiting. Imagine your, your pastor has gone to pray and you're waiting for the answer when he comes. He's just doing. <laughs> what would you think? Some people will say, he went to fake people. He has fake power. Now, what is this? That, you know, you will blame him now. You say he has changed. Abby, some people will say, God has told him something. That's why he's not talking. Somebody will say, That's, God has polished him. God has punished. In fact, some people will leave church not knowing that he has an encounter. And because the thing has to be fulfilled, he will stay until God fulfills what he wants to do. Amen? May you be one of those that will stand with him that say, I know my daddy. 
if it's quiet like this, there's something powerful coming. Because nine months were, were not few, were not days. Oh. Nine months, and the man is just doing. If he wants food, if he wants chicken. <laughs> Can you imagine? You say, you want to say my wife, you just say. All those scriptures are in Luke 1 18, Luke 1 20, 21, all the way to 64 is a long scripture. I won't read it. Amen. You know, God told Gideon when he was going for battle, the people you have are too many. You have to select few. So it's not every battle you take everybody. Some battles, God meant it for you. So as long as you bring people, you still fight. It will get more complicated. But when you get the revelation, you know this is my battle. And you have to face it and you have the victory. But God is releasing your weight to make you a better person, to strengthen your stamina. You have to pass the test. Even Christianity is like school. There are people who are in standard one. There are those who are in five. There are those who, this bishop, this Baba cannot share everything to everybody. They are sons and they are children. So it's not children that you will share some things. It's when you want to make some powerful decision, you move with sons. You separate. Sons, not children. So for you to qualify to be a son, there are classes you have to pass. There are tests that you have to pass. You have to qualify because it's not everybody. When he went at night to dismantle altars, did he take everybody? Only 10 people. Ten people and they finished the job. By the time people woke up, it was just smoke. But if he took everybody, before even they would start the job, the story would be everywhere. Did you hear? We are going today. Those are children. Children share everything. Did you see my mommy? He bought a new car. You know, did you see my mommy? They bought chain for her. Those are children. But when you have men, you just pick ten and you do the job and quietly. And see, after they came even and complained about the God that was brought down, his father said, that, that God himself, he should come and fight for himself now. Are, are we fighting for him? If my son did this thing, he did it. So, so you have to have people who can stand with you. Strong people, not everybody. Separate, be separating who to talk to and who not to talk to. Who to take to prayer and not to pray with. Because some people, when you are praying, eh, you are binding, they are losing. Abio. You are saying I bind in their heart. They say, I lose. I lose. But they are holding hands with you. They are just shaking. Ba, 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 ba. You say, I lose. In their hearts, they are. Some people are wicked. They make your battles very complicated. So don't carry everybody to prayer. And when you pray with people, know in your heart, you don't know who is who. God has to reveal. And it's not everything you pray for with people. Am I saying the truth? Am I saying something? Hallelujah. Let's read Psalms 119 verse 25 in Message Bible. God is restoring us in Jesus' name. God is restoring our marriages in Jesus' name. God is restoring our businesses in Jesus' name. You will not be equally yoked with people who are not of your size. God will bring the right people your way in Jesus' name. You will not sign some deals that were not made for you. Some deals that are coming to close your business, they will not come your way. So before you sign any deal, pray. Tell God it is a lot of money. But if you are not in it, please let something happen. See, as you give me in Message Bible, I was signing, I do music, so I do peace concerts in Kenya. So last year, I went and, uh, uh, you know, one station called me and said, I should tell them why I should be given live coverage for free, whole night. For 31st. So I went to the meeting. I said, because I was not with my manager. I'm with the executives. So before we started the meetings, I said, let's pray. We all bowed and prayed. What was my prayer? I said, God, if it is your will, that we'll be live on this station and we will work together to better your kingdom, let it be. But if it is not your will, let it not happen. And we all said, Amen. By the time we started the meeting, 
their, their countenance has changed. They looked at me. I was not a businesswoman. I was not looking for media coverage. I'm looking for somebody to partner with me to preach the gospel. That as we sing in that, in that place, the, the gospel will go to billions of people. And you know, as God, the man said, you know, we have a list of big artists in Kenya of about 10. So which of these big artists do you have? I said, none. He said, why? I said, I don't operate with big names. I operate with people who carry something. They may not be having hit songs, but they carry substance. When they open their mouths, they heal nations. People are restored. People are inspired. Those are the people I'm looking for. Matured people, seasoned. Not people who are looking for publicity. And they said, okay, we'll take your word. I said, don't worry, come. If there will be nobody, put us off here. I traveled. We were in Mombasa. We were with my husband on a mission. They called me. They said, ah, our guy has approved. I said, yeah, he said, just like that. What did they do? They gave us coverage from eight until morning. We were live. But what did God do? He brought over 20,000 people. We were the biggest show in Kenya on 31st. Why? I consulted God. Don't be moving without asking God. Ask him. Is it your will for me to do this thing? If it's not, let it stay. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Are you reading? Twenty-eight. It's a long scripture that we will read. Amen? My sad life display continues. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Barricade. The road that goes nowhere. Grace me with your clear revelation. 30. I choose the true road to somewhere. I, I post your road sign at every curved corner. I grasp and cling to whatever you tell me, God. Don't let me go down. I'll run the course you lay out for me. If you will just show me how. It's not every race you run. You have to pray that this journey I'm going, this deal I'm taking, if it is not from you, barricade. You pray for your life. Barricade every road that leads to nowhere. Every deal that you're getting to that will get you in trouble. You tell God, barricade. Barricade this one. Barricade this one. And lead me to the right road. That put signs. Let me know when I reach corner. Turn left. See, if those shiny things were not in those curves and it was dark, some people would just go straight and hit the junction. But if you pray about it, God will save you from some things. Amen? I'm rushing because my time is almost over. Hallelujah! Give me Isaiah 66 verse 5. Amplified. Forget about a message Bible. I'm so blessed. I don't know about you. Rumbles and thunder <laughs> from the city. A voice out of the temple. God's voice handling out judgment to his enemies. Verse 7. Before she went into labor, she heard the baby. Before the birth pangs hit, she delivered a son. Has anyone ever had such a thing? Has anyone seen anything like this? A country born in a day. A nation born in a flash. But Zion was barely in labor when she had her babies. So it's not about what you see physically. Isaiah, give me this Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 verse 1. See, it's with revelation. Any delay, any battle you are fighting, no, there is something about it. Because God has said he will not induce labor in you and there is no baby coming. So you may not be seeing any pregnancy, but when you feel labor, you know you are about to birth something. Because he's God by himself. All you do is to obey him. Sing, O barren woman, who feel has never had a baby. Fill the air with song. You, you who've never experienced childbirth, you are ending up with far more children than all the childbearing women. God says so. Hey! Continue now. <laughs> Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out 
Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You are going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You are going to take over all nations. You are going to resettle aban abandoned cities. Do you listen to this prophecy? Sing instead of crying. Sing a song. Because God has said you are a woman and you will give birth to generation, to nation. It's not time to cry, woman. It's time to dance. Keep dancing because the labor is coming. The labor pains. You are about to experience labor pains for nations. Hey! Because he said before she had a child, the pains came before she brought forth. So it's not bringing forth. It's not in what you see. It's in the pain. When you feel the pain, God has induced pain. You know some women, eh, before they give birth, the child will refuse to come and it's time. They induce so that quickly, on time, the baby will come. So God will induce it. And when you feel the pain, you know the baby is about to come. It's the preacher who said yesterday, it's not about which doctor will do the, if it's a man or woman, let the baby come out. So I'm encouraging you today, whatever you're going through, Keep your song. Let anything not take your song. Let the celebration never cease from your mouth. Because some pains you go through is for childbearing. So instead of crying, celebrate because a baby is coming. Hallelujah! Sing a song. That's the weapon I've learned. Every time I see something, I go to my room. Eh? I break dance for God. I say, hey God, this is for you. I know this trouble. There's something good coming. Because not good, every good thing, you don't bear them. Every person that has a powerful story, just listen to where they came from. Listen to their story, how they were born, how it took many months before they came forth. So when you are barren for too long, it, it won't last because this thing, God will close your womb only for a while. Hallelujah. Only for a while because it's not all wombs that would give birth to Jesus. It was only one selected. And see, this woman, when she was told you will give birth to the Savior, when she went to see Elizabeth, they were prophesying. If you read that scripture, they were singing and giving prophecies because of the babies that they were carrying. But see, this other one was a virgin. This other one had waited for too long. But her waiting was for this one to come. So, some of you are Elizabeth. Some of you are in the waiting because your time has not yet come. So don't rush before your time. Don't be pressured. Relax and say, what I'm carrying is for nations. It's prophetic. It's not normal child. Normal children. <laughs> there are people now, every month, like, within a span of five years in marriage, you have like 20 children now. <laughs> if you get married to just give birth, you just do the job of, job of giving birth and that's it. But when you know you are on assignment, ah. it is not every time you give birth. You tell God, this baby I want to bring forth. I want a prophet. I want a child that will shake nations. I don't want children that... Uh, the, the Bible says when Jesus was born, is all the wise men, they saw the star. So let not foolish men see your star. All foolish men go blind. Only wise men will see the star. Those are the ones that, that saw the star and followed it where Jesus was born. So he was not an ordinary child. There are some children, when they are born, they, at birth, they shake principalities. In the spiritual realm, they know somebody has been born. So when you go through trouble, don't give in. Because the reason why you are traveling and you are going through is because you are about to give birth. Hey! To a peculiar baby. To nations. Not children that we just occupy. Area children. Area boys and area girls. Your own will be shaking nations. Every time. Clap for Jesus now. I, I, I feel. I feel the pride in my. Father's eyes. Every time I go for awards. By God's grace, I've won over 11 awards, nationally and globally. Not because I'm good, though. They are good singers that can hit notes. But my own, I said, I'm singing. I'm in this music on assignments. 
I'm not here to show how it's good to hit over. Don't do songs to hit. Do songs to fulfill destiny. And if I do a song, it will win an award. This song I sang, Mama, for you. It's last month I went to Kenya. They called me to record this song. How many musicians are there in Kenya? Why did they call me all the way from Nigeria? They gave me a book, read, and come up with a song within 48 hours. That's the song I wrote from the book I wrote and, uh, in English. See, by the time I finished the song, I sent to the woman, she said, ah, this is more than what even I thought. This woman, I knew her 2011 when she sponsored one of my events, but we kept some friendship. Eh? God introduces you f to people for future. So don't burn bridges yet. Don't be too quick to be enemies with everybody. Some people are destiny helpers. This woman, I invited her for my wedding. She came and I didn't know. She just told me, you know I was in your wedding. I said, wow. She's an old woman like that. But every time I'm in Kenya, how are you, mommy? Yeah, like that. And we don't meet. She was part of this project. They said, how much should we pay you? I said, I don't know now. You are my mommy. Whatever you want, give me. She, she took me to a meeting. It's not my manager. I negotiated. They said, say what you want. If I tell you to blow your head, one song like this, they said they'll pay for my flights. I flew business. Did the song for them. Did the video for them. Within three days, that video was out. The song was, it's only God that can do that. When you are not a normal child, you do abnormal things. Extraordinary things that will shake the minds of people. Stop thinking ordinary. Think peculiar. You are different species. If you do something, God gives you different grace. Because some people will do something for 10 years. But you are on. You will delay. But when you come, three minutes and you are done. That's the grace that God has released upon your life. And when you know that, you relax. You calm down. You know, if God is involved, these people that have ran, I will overtake. I negotiated though, and I did one song. One song for six million. They paid me cash. They said, should we wire or do check? I said, do check. The, the woman said, no, let me wire because you are traveling. They wired the money. I saw my bank manager called me. He said, ah. I said, it's just for that one song. I did. One song. It's not about how many projects you do. It's about doing the right project. If you do the right project, you don't need time. God will reward you the many years that you have lost. That's why God told the barren woman, celebrate because you will forget about your barrenness. You will forget because God will do something new. So when you get the revelation, you move like a peculiar person. You operate in the supernatural. People will look at, how did you come from Nigeria? I say, forget, it's the God I serve. I went there for a few days, finished the song, and I flew back. But meanwhile, my account in Kenya is loaded. I said, Daddy, send me your account number now, the latest one. My mom, my brother, everybody benefited. <laughs> Thank God for women. We don't eat alone, we share. If you are a woman, celebrate yourself. If you are a man next to a woman, celebrate that woman. We don't know selfishness. Small that you get, you share. We have no enmity. When there is war, it's women who will collect all the children that has been left by the people who are fighting and feed them. That's who we are. So you are different. You are peculiar. Stop living substandard life. Stop pleasing people. Don't please anybody. Please God. And when you please God, short time, you will do exploits. Exploits because you are marked for signs and wonders. And people who do signs and wonders are extraordinary people. They don't operate the way human beings operate. Your head will be thinking ahead. People are thinking about today. This friend you have, you never know if he's your destiny helper. So you treat them well. But if they are not to stay, they will go. But if they are destiny helpers, one day that man will say, do you remember me? I'm the one that... Did, 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 did. He's big boss now. He will help you. So you won't have to bargain. He said, I know your value. This thing we are giving you is nothing compared to your value. Just take it. I said, it's okay. It's for you, mama. But in my heart, I said, hey, God, now, wow. Ah, you don't surprise me on this one. <laughs> when I finish singing, let me teach you something. You know Michael Jordan, the basketball. See, I've not met him. I only read about and saw him. 
on TV. His mother was part of that event. On Women's Day, I sang the song. They launched the song. If you see that video, the woman in black suit is Michael Jordan's mom. I didn't know she was the one. She came with the woman and sat there, and I was shooting the video. I said, ah, I need a clip for a woman. I don't need to go outside to look. I said, can you two do this thing for me? They said, why not? I took them. They recorded, finished. The next thing, they called me for a meeting. After we have finished this thing, she said, my son has a global foundation for children and mothers. We were looking for goodwill ambassador for three years, and I'm not looking for anybody. It's you I want. He said, call lo your lawyer to come and sign the documents. Legal documents to allow you to do global tour for this song and to advocate for children. Did I fight any battle? It's the thing, some things God does for you today. It's because of some things you did yesterday. It's not necessary where your position today, you may be weak. But there are some things you did before. There are battles that you fought before. There are things that you paid the price for, but you didn't know why. But sometime God will remember it. One day God will remember and reward you. So I don't need to do for the next three years fully. I'll be paid. I won't tell you how much for that one. But every year something prang in my account. And I'll be doing not Kenya tour. Global. 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 They will just call me and I go. May God give you favor. May God open your eyes that you be connected to the right people. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Clap for Jesus if you are blessed. <laughs> Clap for Jesus, somebody. You are a chosen generation. You are a peculiar person. God has called you for miracles, for signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. For you are wonderful. You are worthy. Thank you. 